Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So I'm really excited about today's topic because today we're going to be talking about take your life back. And I just believe that this is a word that somebody really, really needs. So we're just going to jump right on in. So there's an old outdated assumption that time heals all wounds. And it's funny because, you know, we always say that. We've been saying that for a long time. But honestly, does it really, you know? I don't know. But I don't believe that that's always true because sometimes we can have things that happen to us and, and when we talk about it or we think about it, it, it's very fresh in our minds and it seems like it just happened yesterday, but in reality, it's something that happened maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So I think I'm going to stop saying time heals all wounds because I don't know if that's necessarily true. Now, in the words of Dr. Phil, who I really love, time doesn't change us. It's what we do with that time that changes us. So we're all more than capable of taking, taking control uh, into our own hands when life knocks us down. It's just a matter of doing so deliberately, meaning that you have to be very deliberate about taking control of your life when things happen. So we're just going to jump right on in. And I have eight points that I want to share with you. And to be honest with you, I actually had more than eight points. So what I decided to do is this is going to be a two part video. So I'm going to give you the first eight points this week and the next week I'll give you the second eight points. So let's jump right on in. So number one, rewrite your story. The past is nothing more than a story we repeat to ourselves and allowing ourselves to understand this is an incredibly liberating notion. Learn to pinpoint the opportunities for growth within the destruction of your past and then move forward with those opportunities close to your heart. So I, I really love this in that no matter what has happened to you, you can rewrite your story so that the same thing doesn't happen again. Okay. Number two, invite new people into your life. And if you don't remember anything I say today, this, I believe, is the most important piece. You need to invite new people into your life. Every now and then, you have to take inventory of the people in your life. And you have to ask yourself, do these people still need to be a part of my life? Those that do, you put them over to the right. Those that really do not, because they don't... They don't really play a significant role in your life, whatever that role may be. Move them to your left, but then there's always going to be that middle ground. And those are the people that really add no value to your life at all. Those are the people left in that middle space. Those are the ones that you really need to remove from your life. Again, you know, I always say this. You can still be friends with them. You can like them. You all can break bread if you choose to. But they really have no place in the inner circle of your life. So sometimes the best way to heal from the toxic toxicity of past relationships is to allow the beauty of new ones to flourish. We all end up thinking, behaving, and being like the people we spend the most time around. So choose the ones who make you want to be the best possible version of yourself. And again, if you don't remember anything else I say in this video, remember this one. Number three, tell your story. Be honest about your past. And that's being honest to yourself and, and with other people. Share the pain of everything that's happened to you and allow your strength in moving past it to inspire other people. Don't hide or downplay anything that feels important to you. Refuse to apologize for where you've been. And that's very critical as well. You don't have to apologize for anything. You hear what I say? We all have been through some stuff. I make no apologies for the things that I've been through. But I think it's very, very key to share those bad experiences with other people, especially when you can say, this happened in the past. Oh, but look at me now. You see what I'm saying? Because your backstory actually can and will help other people who may be going through the same thing that you are going through. Sometimes it may not necessarily be the exact same thing, but you know, you get the idea of, of being able to help other people. Number four, be disciplined about self-care. When we're sick, we take particular care to rest. 
drink fluids, and take medicine, even if it temporarily impedes on our productivity. When we're struggling emotionally, we have to take care of ourselves in much of the same way by making self-care a priority. You're setting yourself up for a quicker and indefinitely less painful recovery. And I can't stress that enough. You have got to take care of yourself. Number five, change your appearance. Now, I love this one. Sometimes we need an outward change to reflect the change inside. So I am a firm, firm believer of changing my appearance. Now, sometimes it's not always because I've gone through something. Sometimes it's just, you know, I want to do something different. But I have had things that have happened in my life and I decided, you know what? I'm a new creature, as the Bible says. So I want to do something different. So I may color my hair. I may cut it. Um, you know, just a number of things, but I think it's so important to change your appearance. And I can remember, child, my first bad breakup. And I decided that I was going to do things much differently. I was going to take some time for me and, you know, just, just do Michelle. Just, just love on myself and do me. And I, as part of that change, I decided to get, well, I let my child talk me into it, but I decided to get a tattoo. And let me just tell you something. If you've ever had a tattoo, then you know it hurts so bad. But I decided that was part of my change. And so now on the back right shoulder, I have a butterfly. And the reason why I picked the butterfly, because in my opinion, the butterfly significant, um, signifies change, you know, something new. And so that's why I ended up getting a butterfly. So that was my change. But, you know, it just depends on where I am, what I'm doing. But if I've gone through something, you trust and believe, my appearance will change somehow. I don't care if it's just getting a new lipstick. It could be getting a new pair of glasses. Change is always good. Number six. Stop doing things that aren't working for you. And I need you to listen up very closely as I share this with you. Use your ill fortune as the excuse you've been waiting for to walk away from that, y'all forgive me, shitty job, toxic relationship, or commitment that is making you miserable. If you're going to be forced to start over, you might as well do it once the right way. Again, we have got to stop doing things that are not working for us. If you are getting up every day and you're going to a job where people do not truly appreciate you, I'm not going to tell you now, let me say this, I'm not going to tell you to stop going to that job because you do need money, but you need to be so aggressive in your looking for another job, in your search for another job. You need to be very aggressive with that. Find another job. Find some place where people that will value you for you and what you contribute to that workplace but stop just y'all stop you got to stop doing things that are not working for you if you are in a relationship and you're doing everything you can to make it work but it's still not changing anything you need to stop doing that thing so I, what i want to do is challenge you this week look over your life completely and find anything that you need to stop doing that's not working for you and you'd be surprised at what you come up with Number seven, give yourself permission to let go. I love this. If your past no longer serves you, give yourself permission to let go and forget about the pain that has been holding you back. You dictate your story and you don't have to place emphasis on anything that makes you feel small. Honey, let me tell you something. I am the queen of letting things go, okay? I learned a long time ago I need to let go of anything that no longer serves me but forces me to serve it. And I mean anything. That can be a relationship. It can be um, some a piece of clothing because y'all know we have some clothing in our closet that no longer serves us. And we want to hold on to it because it's cute. And you're thinking, oh, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to get back into it. No, honey, let it go. Let it go. Buy something else. Learn to let go of things that no longer serve you. And number eight. Connect with people who've been through something similar. Seek out the words, company, and comforts of those who understand what you're going through. Read their stories, cherish the wisdom they've gleaned, and use it as a constant, pervasive reminder that you are never alone. And I cannot stress this enough. And this is, I think, another reason why 
I created my Get Back Up group because I want to bring together people who have been through something or are going through something because I think when you get with other people that have been through some things, it helps you to get over whatever it is that you're going through because too many times people, excuse me, <coughs> y'all excuse me, my sinus is still draining. But too many times people feel like they're alone. Like, you know, I'm the only one going through something. But you'd be surprised. You're not. There's so many people out here going through the exact same thing that you're going through or something similar. And even if it's not similar, you've got people out here going through some stuff. So you've got to learn to connect with other people so that you can encourage one another. So, having said that, those are my eight points for today. Like I said, I actually have eight more, but I don't want to overwhelm you this week. So, I'm going to do part two of this video next week. And I just hope that you will take something that I've shared with you today, put it into practice in your own life, and let's become better people for it. So, until our next Speak Life coaching video, I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to seeing you and all your newness. Until next week, take care.